Hey everybody, this is Paige from Mosaic Moments. And today I am going to be sharing two tips for whenever you are using the grid paper. Now, these are two tips most of you know, but I do find it is a little bit of a struggle for some people, especially when they're getting started. So I'm gonna share, first of all, tips on how to align everything on the grid paper correctly. And my second tip is going to be about uh, using the correct die sizes. And in the second half of the video, I am gonna be talking more about organizing your dies. So hopefully that'll make things easier for you when you create your pages. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first tip I'm gonna talk about is how to align everything, all your elements correctly on the grid paper. So right here you can see part of a 12 by 12 sheet of grid paper. Now I'm gonna start aligning these little one inch squares, which the one inch squares are the trickiest ones. They tend to be crooked more. So what you wanna do is take your time and make sure that left corner of that square is going right in that left corner of the grid lines. And in the end, you shouldn't be able to see the grid lines now. I'm at a weird angle because I'm filming and so it's hard for me to get some of the lines on the top of the grid paper correctly. So I highly recommend when you're lining things up that you are standing up if possible. It's a lot easier to see that you covered the grid lines. I'm gonna show a few more at a slower pace. So again, you take the little square and that left corner should go right into the left corner of the grid lines. And then in the end, you should not be able to see any of the line. So really you're just trying to cover that top line and that left line and you just glide it so you don't, I don't, as you can see, I kind of slide the square into the line. I don't just plop it on top. Now over time, when you get better at it, you probably can do that easily. So anyway, just take your time, like I said, and I'm, I've gotten really fast at it, but you just want to slide it in, especially if you're a beginner. Slide the square onto the grid lines, and in the end, you should not see the grid lines. So I'm about finished here with my little mosaic section. Alrighty, so once you have all your mosaic pieces filled in or you can wait till the entire layout is finished, what you wanna do is check over each square. Like I said, these top ones here, I can't see at the angle I'm at, so that's why I recommend standing up so you're looking straight down at your layout. And you shouldn't be able to see the black lines like I can see them here and this is why it's really important to use repositionable glue so you can fix these. As you see, you wanna also check for uneven gaps. You can see how the gaps are approximately the same width. So if you see one that's really thin or very wide, wider than the rest of them or thinner than the rest of them, that probably means it needs to be positioned differently. And sometimes you'll see it, your square's a little bit crooked because you'll see a little bit of that left line. So basically you're gonna look over your mosaic and fix anything that doesn't look right. So I know quite a few of these, I need to put it more on top of the grid lines. This one here, sometimes you have, like in this case, the grid lines are covered completely, but you can see it was scooted over too far to the left because that top line and the, the lines on the grid paper, they're not a full one inch. So you may miss that even though the whole square is covering those grid lines and may have still been put on too far to the left. And so that's why it's not as obvious maybe that it's crooked. So again, I'm readjusting. And then you can look back and check again. I still see a little bit of the black lines here. Like I said, it's a little bit harder for me to see when I'm making a video. And the reality is sometimes the lines show up a little bit. Sometimes I look back at an old page and I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of a grid line there showing. So not really the end of the world. It's not super noticeable if you don't 
get your squares on there perfectly. But in the end, it should really all look neat, straight, and organized. There really shouldn't be a very obvious grid line showing. So don't worry if it's not 100% perfect. Just make sure all the squares look have even gaps between them and that there isn't an obvious grid line showing like it's poking out obviously too far beyond the square or anything like that. And again, this is why repositional glue is very important when creating a Mosaic Moments layout in case you need to adjust any of these little squares especially. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the larger design spots. It's also important to make sure they're aligned over the grid paper correctly. So right here I have a four by six uh, piece. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing as before really. I'm gonna slide it into that left corner and I make sure that it's covering the top lines and the lines on the left. And again, take your time, especially if you are a beginner. And in the end, it should all look neat and straight, obviously. So it looks like I covered it up pretty well. So every time you put it down, you can always check to make sure your grid lines are covered correctly. I'm gonna just do the same thing here, line up this photo and you can see that I have the grid lines covered. You also wanna make sure the gaps in between even the larger elements are the same as the little one inch elements. So all the gaps in between each element should be the same width. Now it won't be perfect if you're hand cutting especially, we don't necessarily cut them perfectly and so some things end up becoming a little bit wider or a little bit narrower than normal, but if you're using the dies, you're probably not gonna get that very much because they're sized perfectly. So I'm going to speed up the video a little bit here because I think you get the idea. But just remember to glide it into the corner. Whether you're using a one inch square or you're putting in one of these bigger blocks, you just lie, glide it into that left corner and then make sure again that the top and left sides of the grid line are completely covered. So that's the key here. Make sure they're completely covered. And again, also really important to make sure the gaps in between each element are approximately the same size. If they look a little bit narrower than normal or wider than normal, sometimes that usually means they need to be scooted over a little bit more. If you're hand cutting, sometimes I find if I'll accidentally cut the mats a little bit too wide and I may go to back to the cutting mat and trim it down just by a tiny hair. And now I'm gonna put on my mats that'll go on the four by six section. If you wanna learn more about matting your four by six photos, go check out the video in the top left, or excuse me, right corner now. Go check out that video. All right, so this is the last photo for my layout and it is completely done. And again, you can put it up close and make sure all the grid lines are covered like I did with the mosaic section. My second tip is to make sure you are using the correct die sizes or if you are hand cutting, it is absolutely necessary to make sure you are hand cutting each element to the correct measurements. So we get a lot of questions from beginners so about the pattern gallery. So a lot of you will look at the patterns. So for today's layout, I'm using pattern 375. And for many of you, you can't really tell just by looking at it which exact dies or which exact measurements you need. And so at the beginning, when you're getting started, you're gonna have to take the time to kind of learn and uh, which sizes go where, but over time, you will learn to recognize it much much faster. And that is what I've heard from other people. So it just takes time, it takes practice. But as a beginner, what I do recommend is go to the pattern gallery and find the pattern you want. So I want pattern number 375. And what you're gonna do, I have highlighted here, view pattern details. You can go to the gallery by going to mosaicmoments.com slash patterns. And we also have a pattern book, which will also have the same information I'm gonna talk about. So go here, go click on view pattern details under the pattern you want to use. 
it will ask you for your email, but that's all the information we need. And then you'll be taken to another page. So once you click on view pattern details, you should see a page like this. It'll show the pattern and you obviously can see which die sets you need. So for mine, I need the grid die. I need set A, that's the blue one. And I also need set B, that's the purple one. So you can probably recognize really quickly which sets you need based on the colors that are shown here. If you have the silver dies, the inserts have that color. And the next thing I want you to notice, so on the right over here, you can see the exact measurement it has set A and next to it has the exact measurements of the die. So, and we're gonna look over the insert in a moment. And then it also shows the exact measurements for set B. So if you're hand cutting, you know the exact measurements you need to cut each piece. But if you have the dies, you may still be wondering, how do I know which die to use from those sets? So we're going to go over that. But you want to make sure you have these measurements handy either on your tablet or desktop or if you have the pattern book, you can have your pattern book open. So I'm just going to go over what a common problem is when you don't have the correct die sizes. So I just took the one square off and what happens is you're looking at your dies, they're all together, you're looking at the image and you kind of have an idea of which die to grab. So you're like, uh, maybe this one, this looks about right. And then you go to cut it. So I have this photo that was cut to that size and you go and you see it's way smaller. The grid lines are showing and you're really confused. This happens to a lot of people. Now, if you do this by chance, you don't have to recut your photo. You can create a mat that fits the measurements of the grid. So don't worry, you don't have to reprint another photo necessarily. But it's really frustrating because a lot of people get really confused and they're not really sure what went wrong. So first of all, there are dies that fit the measurement of the grid and the basic die sets. And what you need to do is when you get the insert, look at the information on the bottom. So when you get these dies, make sure you do keep the inserts. What you need to know is the solid color on the package, the solid colors are the sizes that fit the measurement to the grid and let you know how many squares it covers, plus the layering dies are the dotted ones. So those are ones that are not gonna fit the grid. In every set, the largest die and the very smallest dies fit the measurement of the grid, and the ones in between them are the layering sizes. The best thing you can do when you first get these dies is to organize them. So I have here, Mac. I recommend using magnetic sheets. These ones are from Stampin' Storage. We really like them. This is our favorite organizing brand so far that we've used. And so I have one that's labeled set A and the other one is set A layering dies. So I know that largest die fits the grid. So I'm gonna put that with set A. The next one is the layering die. And this is going to be the case with all the sets, by the way. The next one down fits the grid, so it's going with set A, and then the layering die. This one's going to go with set A. The next one down is a layering die. This one's going to go with set A. Then the layering die. And if you're still confused, you can get out your ruler and measure each square if you need to and look at that insert. So if you're still a little bit confused about that, you can make sure you get each measurement, measure each one to make sure you have the right ones going on the magnetic sheet you wanna put it on. And the next thing I recommend is, I just showed a little label, and you can either write down the number of squares it'll cover, which is what I do, or you can put down the exact measurements of the dies, whichever way your brain works best is the right thing for you. So I just put down five by five squares, but again, you can put down five and a half by five and a half inches for this big one. So I do recommend getting a label maker or have some other method of labeling each size of the dies to make sure you can always know which one is which. And I just like to put the label right in that corner, right below the die itself. And for the layering dies, 
So I just put the one up for the grid measurements down and now I want to also label the layering dies so I know which of the layering dies go with which <laughs> one that fits the grid. I know it's a lot to say. All right, so what I do personally is I, again, it gives you the exact measurements on the insert, but I just put five by five dash L, the L meaning layering. So you can do that, or like I said, put in the exact measurement, whichever way is the best for you. And so now I know that that first die in the layering set is gonna be the layering die for the five by five die for, for the one that fits the grid. I know it's, it's a lot to say, so I hope you understand what I'm saying. If not, you can ask me some questions in the comments below. So I recommend, again, doing this as soon as you get your basic die bundle, or if you haven't done this already, go ahead and do it. Organize each of your sets on a magnetic sheet. So I have the 4x4, four four, then the 3x3, three three, and like I said, you can refer to your insert. And I do recommend keeping your inserts. Uh, you can probably stick them on the back of the magnetic sheets and then you kind of have that reference all the time. But if you have lost those inserts, I do have a page on our website that lists out all the sizes. I will add that link to the description below. So I have all my dies from set A labeled here. So this tells me how many squares they cover on the grid paper. And again, I'm going to continue adding the labels for my layering dies. So that way I know very quickly which of the layering die dies go with which of the dies that fit on the grid paper. Again, you can look at the insert to know the exact measurements of the layering die sizes. And the ones that are a little bit smaller than the die that fits the grid is the layering die for that size. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So hopefully you'll look at the insert and you'll be able to see. Oh, the one, this one's a little, like you have the two and a quarter by two and a quarter square. So the square, the layering die itself is a little bit less than two by two inches. And I totally ran out of label. So I don't have a label for the smallest one for the layering set. I'll have to fix that later. But now when you have all of your dies organized, you'll be able to know much easier which die is the correct one. So, so again, I'm showing my photo. It was cut with the correct die size. So, again, my second tip is to make sure you're using the correct measurements. And so you want to make sure you're using the correct dies. And one way to make that easier is to organize them. So now I'm going to go back to the page pattern. So I showed the pattern gallery earlier and I decided to print out the pattern so I can easily explain it, but you'll see the same information online. So it's pretty easy to know which one is the grid die, right? It's the only one. It doesn't come in a set. And obviously you can look at blue and know it's set A and it'll list it on the pattern information page. It also has set B and it has the set M&M &M as well. So you can just look at it and see which measurements you need. Okay, but initially you may not really know immediately and you may not recognize it right away. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna grab my highlighter here. The numbers to pay attention to are the first number you see in that set. So I just highlighted three by three and that's gonna be the biggest one for that layout. So three by three here. So because I had it labeled and because I saw I had three by three, I knew which one to pick out faster. And the same thing with one by one, which is probably the easiest one because that's the smallest one in the set. So I have set B, which is a little more complicated. I highlighted the six and the four and I have it labeled four by six. So I know it's that biggest one. And I'm going to highlight the other numbers here, five by three and four by two. So I know I need those sizes. So I have here the three by five and the two by four. Obviously you could flip it around. It's the same size, right? So 
Again, really important to organize your dies and label them. And then when you look at the pattern gallery, like I said, just look at, you don't need to look at the exact measurements unless you're hand cutting really. So you just need to pay attention to those first two numbers. So the three by five, two by four. And then of course, that is what I use to cut my mats and my photos. So hopefully this will make it easier for you. A lot of people at the beginning have to refer to the pattern information a lot. And then over time, you'll recognize, you'll start recognizing a lot quicker without having a need to check every measurement. So just know at the beginning, that's how it's gonna go, but you'll learn and recognize it a lot faster over time. The pattern details also show you how many times you need to cut with that same die. So I know with the three by three, I need to cut it twice. The one by one, I cut four times. Six by four is only one time. So that's also good to know that it lets you know how many times you need to cut with that die. All right, we are at the end of today's video. So just to summarize, tip number one is to make sure everything is lined up on the grid paper correctly. So take your time, slide it into the square or slide it onto the grid lines and make sure they're covered. And the second tip is to make sure you use the correct die sizes and it will, it will help to keep the insert and to organize your dies and to keep looking at the measurements on the pattern details so you'll learn over time how to recognize each one much faster all right if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and let me know if you liked this video by giving it a thumbs up anyway i will see you all next time